secure neighborhoods. The weekend assaults in the capital, Kabul, ha and elsewhere left over 50 people, including four civilians. Well, Afghan President Hamid Karzai has called for an investigation into what is described as the biggest coordinated Taliban attacks this year. Karzai says intelligence failures on the part of the U.S. set forces allowed the militants to sneak into the most secure neighborhoods. The weekend assaults in the capital, Kabul, ha and elsewhere left over 50 people, including four civilians and 11 Afghan soldiers dead. Washington has dismissed Karzai's claim, saying... The attacks were likely carried out by the Pakistan-based Haqqani network. This comes weeks ahead of the NATO summit in Chicago, where Karzai is expected to ink a strategic pact with the U.S. Meanwhile, the U.S. is reportedly gearing up for a major offensive in the war-torn nation. Reports say the U.S.-led spring offensive will be in the regions that control the main access routes into Kabul. Joining us now from studios in Washington is author and historian Dr. Webster Griffin Tarpley. Many thanks for joining us here on Press TV, Dr. Tarpley. Now, how much of an impetus would Sunday's events provide for the U.S. at forces, uh, to the U.S. at forces rather, for their own spring offensive, which is being described as a major one in Afghanistan? Well, this is a, a kind of a mini Tet, uh, something like the Tet Offensive in, uh, in Vietnam in the early months of 1968, but on a much smaller scale. And it shares with Tet the idea that the main results here are political rather than military. Militarily, these seven attacks, uh, three in, in uh, uh, the capital, Jalalabad, uh, Gardez, a few other places, these have not been militarily very successful. Politically, they've been extremely successful. And it raises once again here in the uh, war-weary American people, what is the point of all this? The standard answer is that it's to prevent Al-Qaeda from gaining a base. But of course, the US and the British have been helping Al-Qaeda to take over large parts of Libya as a base, or Somalia, if they want that. So, this, this really doesn't, uh, doesn't amount to anything. Uh, what circulates here in Washington is called the Divine Plan. Divine was a CIA official. And the uh, Divine Plan says, forget about counterinsurgency. Focus on counterterrorism only. That means drones, aircraft, and at most some special forces flying around in helicopters, uh, and then leave the rest to the Afghan forces. And I think we can just take, take that one step further. If, if it's Karzai on the ground, that's fine, but maybe from the U.S. point of view, it's better if it's the Taliban, because Karzai, as soon as he's on his own, is going to bring in the Chinese, whereas the, the feature of the Taliban that the U.S. has always liked is that they keep everybody out. They can't get along with anybody. Uh, the uh, American ambassador to Afghanistan, Crocker, uh, just recently said that the events of Sunday prove that the U.S. cannot leave the country, at least uh, not as far as the deadline that has been set by Obama goes. What do you say to that? Well, I think that's a, that's a losing or minority position. Again, what I outlined just a minute ago is a strategy for an open-ended, endless U.S. presence. It doesn't end in 2014. It just goes to a different mode. And it keeps Afghanistan in a perpetual state of low-intensity guerrilla conflict where no oil pipelines can be built, no natural gas pipelines can be built, no railroad from India to, to Europe can be built through the Khyber Pass. It remains a kind of a dead zone of economic development. Well, the Afghan president wants to launch an investigation into Sunday's attacks. What would you say has prompted this, considering serious intelligence failures have taken place before in the course of the U.S. occupation? I, I Again, I think he may be on to something. I think he, he is probably right that there are intelligence factions on the U.S. side that wanted one or more of these things to happen uh, for reasons that it may be hard to reconstruct from afar or from the outside. But I, I think there's every reason to investigate this. And the statements, of course, from the State Department uh, go right into the circular file. This is simply uh, the big lie as practiced at Foggy Bottom. The, the sad thing is that we have no peace movement left here in the United States. Under normal circumstances, a peace movement would be able to say, all right, this is enough now, get out, get out. 
since the foundations here control the peace movement and the foundations are supporting Obama's timetable and his benchmarks, so to speak, uh, there's very little uh, popular resistance. It may well be that in NATO countries uh, that are participating in this adventure, that there'll be a, a backlash. Uh, maybe France might be one. Uh, who knows what could happen there? Or some other NATO countries. Uh, and if they begin to leave, that could also accelerate the departure. Anything that's signed by, by Obama and Biden, I think, is not worth the paper that it's written on, especially if it's a, if it's a pledge to Karzai, whom the U.S. Has, has barely tolerated all these years. Hello, everyone. Welcome to Global Government News. Today is Wednesday, April 18th, 2012, and I'm Darko. My website is ggnonline.com. That's ggnonline.com. And on YouTube, it's ddarko2012 and 2013. I'm not sure how you feel about Webster Tarpley. You can go either way with them, but I thought I'd include it in there because there's a lot of news um, with Afghanistan, a lot of cooking over in that part of the world. Uh, a lot of parts of the world but right now that's the focus and um, you have the NATO summit summit coming up in Chicago it was the G8 uh, NATO summit but uh, they were expecting a lot of protesters and stuff like that so actually I, I, I came to find out that uh, it did really get uh, split up I thought that they just canceled it in Chicago the whole thing but either way it says G8 summit is to be held in Camp David Maryland on May 18th 19th it will occur alongside the NATO summit likely generating unusual amount of attention positive and negative so I wonder how much more than the other right but uh, it was previously uh, scheduled for the McCormick place in Chicago so uh, yeah but remember this article Hillary Clinton promotes 22nd century NATO ahead of Chicago summit so just briefly, it says NATO was formed 63 years ago, supposedly as a counterbalance to the Soviet Union uh, in the Central Europe. It says uh, 21 years after the disappearance of the USSR, the world's sole, mil sole military superpower and its Secretary of State are promising its continuation and growth into the 22nd century and beyond. So they want a global uh, army, basically. And, and remember that both sides were created by the same entities, the same uh, interests, invested interests. Uh, I guess you can put it. But uh, it says here, by way of belated acknowledgement that the main purpose of NATO's war in Afghanistan was to build an international integrated expeditionary military force. There are 50 nations contributing soldiers, equipment, artillery, and aircraft for NATO's international security assistance force for future wars. Clinton said that the Chicago summit will enhance the Allies' commitment to joint exercises and training programs that deepen the habits of cooperation. And that's cooperation they have developed through their hard, diligent work together in Afghanistan. So, moving on, did the U.S. expect Taliban attacks? We just saw that in that press TV um, video, basically saying that, yes, they did. So, it goes on and says that the news today is all about Australia leaving Afghanistan earlier than planned, or so the Prime Minister says. But there are several uh, cross-currents taking place in this still-continuing war. It says, while allies are deserting NATO, others have already pulled out. The U.S. remains invested in the current timetable, which calls for troops to leave in 2014. But it goes on and says not only that, but there are suspicions that the withdrawal from Afghanistan is not any different than the United States' withdrawal from Iraq that has left a significant presence in that country as well as a large U.S.-NATO military base. So in order to achieve this continued pres presence, sorry, there are those who believe the violence in Afghanistan is actively being encouraged by the United States and NATO. A blogger, Stephen Lenman, says the U.S. wanted Taliban uh, attacks to happen in Kabul. He says in an interview on RT News Channel, he pointed out that the United States is building huge bases the size of cities in both Iraq and Afghanistan. The U.S., he claims, really has no intention of pulling out. So again, with the sexual innuendo. So yeah, even if they did decide to pull out, uh, there'd be numerous private contractors in, Af in the Afghan area. And it goes on and says that mercenaries would remain to do the bidding of those who continue to wish the war to be waged. It says here the global power elite has something of a stranglehold on reporting worldwide and owns much if not all the major media. It says what is reported uh, usually serves the purpose of the owners. In this case, those who are prosecuting the war in Afghanistan are doing so at the behest of an elite that seems to want to consolidate world government. Afghanistan seems to be standing in the way. And of course, we have all these uh, aggravations as far as the slaughter of Afghan civilians by the crazed lone uh, serviceman who wasn't alone. Remember, we've already gone through that and proved that he wasn't alone, but they're going to try him as an alone gunman. And recent episodes involving the defilement of the Quran, now the Taliban has struck.
And finishing up, on the other hand, those in charge of American policy can use the attacks to claim that the native military and civilian forces in Afghanistan are not ready for that planned 2014 drawdown of NATO and American troops. And it goes on and says that um, this individual lineman believes that the U.S. military industrial complex intends to keep the war going for as long as it can. Another issue is that the Afghanistan is not by any means pacified. It goes on and says the Pushtuns and the Pakistani uh, tribes remain relatively defiant. This does not bode well for the global governance the elites apparently wish to impose. Conclusion, uh, the navel of the world is an important place. As of yet, it is not subjugated to the control of the powers that be. And I'm not going to go through these articles here, but just here are some headlines of propaganda that are going on by the AP and whatnot. U.S. NATO ready uh, plan to hand off Afghanistan combat. And we have Karzai wants at least $2 billion a year from the United States after it withdraws its troops in 2014, supposedly, right? Rasmussen urges NATO members to fund Afghan army after 2014. I found this as NATO employing slave labor in Afghanistan. This is according to U.S. State Department documents, so you got to take it with a grain of salt. It says, now appears yet again the American-led NATO military force station there is not just part of the solution, but also part of the problem. Well, they never went there for a solution, and uh, they've always been part of the problem. And it's not really a problem. It's business. And just briefly, uh, from April 18, 2012, Chicago summit NATO to complete domination of Arab world. And... Uh, if you go back to Wednesday's video, remember I mentioned that term, Eurabia, and this is what it has to do with, is actually bringing in Arab countries, uh, such as Tunisia, Morocco, Jordan, uh, into the EU. So they'd be having the same rights as European Union states, which, <laughs> if you can call them that, you know, these technocrats that are in charge of the EU, you know, they're elected. It's so democratic, right? Prime Minister Turkey may invoke NATO's Article 5 over Syrian uh, border fire. Remember, this is um, that R2P policy or uh, basically responsibility to protect. And it uses the guise of a humanitarian crisis in order to de facto invade a country or um, have a regime change. And I've mentioned this a month ago, and it may have actually expired. But either way, it says in a statement that may be interpreted as the harshest response yet to the escalating 13-month-old Syrian crisis, which was, you know, overwhelmingly, we know this, that it was staged and provocateur and fomented by the West. So Turkish Prime Minister, uh, who is also on the bandwagon for the West, and works pretty much represents them for the first time on Wednesday, raised the possibility of calling on the NATO military alliance to protect Turkey's border against incursions by Syrian forces. This is the original article. It says NATO's right to collective defense does not require the UN to pass a resolution authorizing such an intervention, but it would be desirable to have a, the UN on board if NATO decides to take military action. And remember, they put this a deadline, the uh, Kofi Annan deadline, uh, on Syria, ceasefire, which was never going to happen, remember, because I said that the rebels are actually being funded by the West to foment this unrest. So... They basically want the Syrian regime to come to its knees because they're much like Afghanistan where they said, what, they're not in the hands of the global elites yet. So basically, the Syrians, when they were uh, leaving the country just to get out of that mess, that hellhole, where were they going? They were going to Lebanon. They were going to different places everywhere but Turkey. Then all of a sudden, when they put this deadline on them, just in the past couple of weeks, bam, they went uh, near the Turkish border, and now they have what looked like, to me, FEMA camps, basically, uh, set up. And, of course, you're going to have what coming? You're going to have EU keen to send UN monitors as fighting halt in Syria. Then in Syria, send in the mercenaries. And they're actually uh, uh, serious about this article from the examiner to send in mercenaries. Uh, and then we have Angela Jolie. So we're going to have her also. Um, basically High Commissioner of the United Nations um, Refugee Agency uh, rolled out there, you know, spewing out the propaganda that needs to be put out there, basically to win support. But it says here, Russian warships to patrol Syrian coast, and it goes they're going to be patrolling off the Mediterranean, says military officials. And it says here, Iranian army sends notice to U.S. destroyers in Persian Gulf. We notified the destroyers that they should stay away from these areas in the Gulf, and our notification was accepted, says Sali. So you can check out this video of a pro-Palestinian protester getting basically butt-stocked in the face by an Israeli force. We also have Israeli forces shoot and injure a young Palestinian girl and a farmer. And lastly, U.S. Army Africa conducts first anti-terrorism training. Uh, to U.S. personnel, that's right. Look at this individual. He looks like he's having a good time.
This is GGN, and I'm Darko. Thank you.